Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. And today we are going to be reviewing the new Adidas Total Shoe, or at least that's where this video started. It has uh, kind of taken off into something different, uh, which we'll, uh, we'll hopefully have in, in some sort of narrative form here to make this video make sense. But as you can see, I'm gonna be taking a look at a lot of other shoes and revisiting a shoe that I was a little bit critical of in the past, but we're gonna circle back to that. So this is the Adidas Total. Now, as far as I know, this shoe is branded and designed specifically for powerlifting. So I was excited about it when I saw, originally the first place I saw this was a client of mine who was in Great Britain or something, uh, the UK, and he had access to this shoe, which I think it's, it's actually now available in the United States. And one of my clients, bought two of them. I think he was trying out different sizes. So we had this one for me to be able to try. And that's the whole reason I have it. It just kind of landed in my lap. And if you've followed this channel for really any amount of time, you probably know that I've struggled historically to find a good flat shoe specifically for deadlifting. And I made a video a while back, really that one was talking about this Sabo Deadlift Pro um, and, and kind of came to the conclusions that uh, well, really at that point, my, my conclusion was that the Reebok Power Light shoe is the best shoe available. But now I'm having to redo this video because I still feel that way. And I'm gonna try not to make this video just kind of turn into a, a love letter to that shoe. But the issue is that that shoe seems to not be available for, for one, with any amount of consistency. And two, in my research, I guess, for this video, I went looking to see what that shoe was looking like, like availability-wise, and I couldn't even find it on the Reebok website. I had to find an external link that could get me to the landing page. I have pretty low hopes that that shoe is coming back, but, uh, but if it does, I'm gonna buy multiple pairs. Uh, I may reference that shoe here and there throughout the video for, uh, for some things that I'm looking for in shoes, but I'm gonna try to keep it with the kind of the popular available shoes and give recommendations based on that. So the Adidas Total, branded specifically for powerlifting, and it has advertised a zero degree drop, which is something that the, this shoe does not have, uh, it, a little small drop with, with this shoe. Um, very wide, so my first impressions of this shoe right when I put it on were that it was positive in a lot of ways that many flat shoes are lacking. Was that that wide base, kind of the solid construction overall, very, very grippy sole, felt great. My first impression when I put this on and what even led to me wanting to make this video in the first place was that this shoe seems really good. Um, I think right off the bat, just visually something to, to look at with this shoe and then kind of all, I don't know, flat lifting shoes these days, they seem to have a very high, what looks like a sole. This is not the entire sole. It just wraps up and around, similar to how the Reeboks have. I think a lot of times people think the Reeboks have a very thick sole, but it's just the sole wrapping around the edge to add a little stability. So all of that seems good, except once I took the insole out, which by the way, you should absolutely, if you are doing deadlifts specifically, if you are deadlifting in flat shoes or any shoe, take the insole out. We don't want that extra cushion and for, we for sure want, don't want the extra range of motion associated with it. So when I took out the insole, I was surprised to find a second clearly padded pretty thick insole that's non-removable. The client that gave me this sent me a picture just recently of him cutting up, tearing up the insole to try to make it thinner and not very successful, which I don't think that the shoe would, uh, would be very comfortable after that. But he even found afterwards that the sole itself was surprisingly thick. So despite my first impressions of this shoe being very positive with it being a well-made, solidly constructed wide shoe, the thickness and the softness of that internal, well, the, the sole itself, and then the sewn in extra insole are, are just unacceptable, I guess. So it does kind of lead to, I guess, other questions as far as what I'm really looking for a shoe because this was off to a good start. <laughs> All those things I mentioned were very positive. And I think for just a regular lifting shoe, this checks a ton of boxes for me. 
So for some context, one of, one of the things that I really don't like with flat shoes, historically, I've been very, very anti-slippers. So doing due diligence for this video, I tried out these shoes and hated them. And so I figured, okay, so if I can't recommend this shoe, what can I recommend? So I ordered a bunch of shoes and I guess I'm gonna to continue to do so because I need to be able to recommend a flat shoe to my clients and I guess even for people on this channel. So I ordered the Notorious Slippers, which, um, well, I guess specifically the 2.5s uh, are notorious. What I've heard now is that these are notorious for being the worst version, but I also ordered the original. I have some original ones as well. Um, for, for some context, because I, I wanted the Sumo Soul, I wanted to try that out and I wanted to compare it to the originals. And honestly, despite people telling me that this specific version was worse than other versions, I didn't find them to be much different. I, I kind of found them equally bad. And my main issues with slippers always comes down to how stretchy the, the whole upper material is. And despite having the strap, the metatarsal strap to go across the foot and secure it, I just am never able to feel like my foot is not sliding out of the shoe. Now, this shoe, I'm sure I'm gonna play some videos, is probably a size too big for me. And I had a lot of issues kind of around the, the heel area and it looks very, very loose. That, that I think is a product of, of this one being a little bigger than it should be, but I had similar issues, and, and maybe I'll show some videos of that, um, similar issues with the smaller size that I think is appropriately sized as well. I, I really did not see much of a difference. So despite the sole of these slippers being solid, well-made, very, very thin, I was very happy with that. My first impression inside of this shoe was that they're wide, they feel supportive overall, but then going into my stance and trying to find the position where I wanted in my feet, I'm just pressing against nothing. I don't have any support. So I've always felt like, let's just make a slipper with better construction, uh, you know, some, some sort of material like either one of these shoes have, and make laces, right? If it was this shoe with laces, with better material, I, I think I would be very, very happy, which I guess we'll, uh, we'll come back to later on in the video. So this shoe would definitely had the advantage to me where it checked those boxes, is it had a more kind of athletic shoe construction, it had the laces. I really don't care about the metatarsal strap. I don't think that that strap is necessary. I, I would much rather just have laces on a shoe to be able to manipulate how tight it is, um, you know, the total shoe and especially even going up the shoe. Um, so. I, I've been very critical of deadlift slippers for a long time, and I think that this really only made things worse for me, which again leads me to the question, well, then what? If I, if I can't recommend deadlift slippers as a flat shoe, then what should we be doing? Then I tried these, which I, I guess are the um, Adidas HVC wrestling shoes, which are very popular, um, Joey Flex, Joey Franzo, um, these are the ones that I think he recommends all the time to his lifters. So I was curious about these shoes as well. And right away, I think they, they fix a lot of the problems that slippers have to where it does have obviously the laces, the construction of the shoe is a whole lot better. I'd say equally as grippy with the, with the sole and equally as thin. I didn't have any of those issues, but they are shockingly thin and I'll, I'll or narrow. I'll try to demonstrate, or I'll try to show comparisons between these and some of the other shoes. They were so incredibly narrow, not only in the, the toe, which to me looks like, uh, like a little Mexican boot um, or some sort of like elf shoe with how much it curls up, which you can feel. You can feel it kind of pulling your toes up. But it was so, so tight around like the ball of my foot that it kind of felt like it was pushing my foot out of the shoe. I, I don't know. I, so. I ordered, and by the way, I did order a half size up in these shoes to, to hopefully counteract it. A lot of times that's the criticism with wrestling shoes in general is that they tend to be a little bit narrow for most people. So I ordered a half size up to try to anticipate that. And I had a significant amount of room between the end of my toe and the end of the shoe, and it was still incredibly tight. So honestly, I cannot recommend either one of these shoes. Uh, the, these shoes I think are bad in opposite ways. Um, you know, anything that's positive about the slippers is negative on the, the wrestling shoes and kind of vice versa. 
Uh, which, <laughs> so, so at that point, after having unique issues with all of these different shoes, it got me back to the beginning where it's like, what shoe do I recommend? If the Reebok shoes, which I think are a combination, I have, I have kind of, an, I have them right here so I can compare, very, very thin sole, very flexible, supportive all the way through the sole, very wide, everything that I would want a shoe. So if, if that shoe is not available, then what shoe can I recommend? So luckily I still had my Sabo deadlift shoes or the Sabo Pros and the shoes that I deadlifted in for years, my original Sabo shoes, which I think they still have some sizes with the straps on their website, um, or I guess on Max Barbell, I think is, is their main distributor. Um, but I think their new version that from my understanding they're gonna continue to produce is the exact same shoe, but without the strap. So that's fine by me. I, I don't think that the straps are necessary. So both of these shoes are available. So I went back and did a little bit of testing with these. So I, I guess to start off with, the, uh, the original Sabo shoes fix so many of the problems that the Adidas HVCs have. They are not nearly as narrow. I, I think that they could be slightly wider, but the sole is equally as thin. Um, they're flat across the bottom. I, I mean, any bit of curl up at the front, I, I don't really see as an issue. So as far as wrestling shoes go, I would just go with the original Adidas. And, and I think that they're totally fine and good. And if it was me and I didn't have my Reeboks, this is almost certainly the shoe that I would be lifting in. Just because of the solid construction. Right now, this sole is so worn out. I lifted them probably five years. I don't know that I ever even got a new pair. Um, but so the, the sole is incredibly worn out, but they were very grippy when I first got them. And I think these are, I would say excellent shoe relative to anything else available. But that also made me revisit some of my criticisms with the Sabo Pro. And these are, these are basically brand new. You can see at this point, I wore them just a few times. And so I think hindsight, maybe I'll, uh, I'll go back on some of my criticisms because I probably was too critical in comparing it to my favorite shoe, right? Like anything negative there, I think really was just personal preference that some of the negative aspects of the Sabo Pro are not negative for other people, right? Like Bryce Krawcheck loves these shoes. He's a very, very good deadlifter. I, I don't think he's wrong. I just think that we have kind of different, we, we have different things that we want to feel in our deadlifts and just kind of stability wise. And actually that's my criticism is that these shoes are almost too stable. So for me to expand on that a little bit, what these shoes have that I really did not like is this little outer heel, right? So. To, to go back, they do say that they have a small elevation in the heel, but that it should compress to be a totally flat shoe when there's weight in there. Now, I, I think that that's a silly concept. I think it should just be flat and that would make me happier, but we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, especially after all this, that the shoe is essentially flat when there's weight in there. But to me, one of my issues with it was just in the feedback that I want from my foot within the shoe and that this outer lip actually kind of forced my foot to not, it, it would force my foot to be restricted within the shoe to the shoe's specifications and not really where my foot wanted to be. So we can see this, this shoe, I guess in the front, it's a lot, it's pretty flexible, but it's significantly more rigid in the back right here. All this flexibility is coming from the front where the Reeboks are pretty flexible through the entire shoe which actually gives you issues on the bench press. You know, I, I can't bench press in the shoes because they are so flexible and they look like they're not flat. Um, so just my personal preference was that the Reeboks felt kind of similar to like a wrestling shoe where I could have a little bit of more flexibility with where my foot was settling, but they were still very grippy, very supportive. And so I got that support in the places that I specifically felt like I needed because my foot would settle into those places and I had the ability to do it. Whereas with these, great construction, wide, solid, 
almost essentially flat, but I did not like that the edge of the shoe kind of felt like it was forcing my foot inwards rather than allowing at times, especially with my sumo deadlift, to be able to settle outwards. So now after having done more extensive testing and reviewing some of the um, you know, more popular shoes, I, I have to come back with a much, much more positive review of the Sabo Deadlift Pros. Uh, now I know that they do have a new version that's supposed to be like more heavy duty. Uh, I would avoid that one, at least personally, because it, it's, it's this shoe, but it, you know, more, I think it's more leathery. Um, throughout the construction of the, the upper part of the shoe, which is the opposite. All the issues that I had would be just compounded with that. But I, I think, you know, for some people that solid feeling would be fine. So at this point, my main thought on flat shoes is that there just are not a lot of very good options. Um, I, I think your best options are probably the wrestling shoes kind of overall with a, a price standpoint, but I would go with the original Sabos if you're going that direction. I think that these are gonna be great for almost everyone. Obviously, I'm really picky with this kind of stuff. And I have specifically the things I'm looking for, but a lot of people won't have issues at all. I would say especially if you take a little bit of a closer stance, whether it's conventional or sumo. Um, if you're pulling conventional, you can probably get away with slippers, no problem. Um, but, but if it was me at this point, I would almost certainly, I think, be squatting in the Sabo Deadlift Pros and then deadlifting in their original shoes. Um, so anyway, the, I guess, final verdict, the final review on this, this video about the Adidas Pros, or no, not the Adidas Pros, the Adidas Total shoes are don't buy them. Unless, where I would recommend these shoes is if you are not really a power lifter, um, if you're somebody who squats, benches, and deadlifts, you know, kind of recreationally, and you're not really trying to care very much about the, the margins, you know, you're not trying to get everything you can out of it, I think this shoe is really, really comfortable, uh, especially on my upper body days. I've been using these a lot. I think the construction is really good. They're comfortable for entire training sessions. So comfortable that a lot of times I would finish my session and feel like I was ready to go for a jog and not have to change shoes. Um, so I, I think probably the entire review could be summed up in one of my comments on my Instagram was that somebody commented when you have deadlifts at five o'clock and tennis at 502. If that is your schedule, these shoes are definitely really good for you. So um, I am going to order, or I did order, they're on their way, the, the new, I guess the Vivo shoes, um, the Primus 3s, whatever they're called, um, that, that also are growing in popularity as well. I do have high hopes for those. A lot of my criticisms, what I said about the slippers and kind of the combination, those seem to be exactly that. Um, they seem to be a deadlift slipper that has laces and a little bit more solid construction. Um, if I like those shoes, I'll do a review on them and hopefully try to make it pretty short. If I don't like them, you maybe never hear about it uh, and we'll just all continue to hunt for, uh, for new shoes. So if you're somebody out there who is in some way connected to a, a shoe manufacturer, I, I mean, notorious lift people, if you're watching this video, I mean, just do do what you're doing. Make make this sole, but make the construction of the the upper construction not this you know weird kind of flexible material. And personally, I love the high top. Uh, I, I I don't tighten it very tight. I really don't like that restriction on my ankle. But again, the same thing that I said about kind of settling in certain places. I like feeling like this kind of the sides of my foot, especially when I'm pushing laterally. I don't want it to just be the very side of my foot itself. I like kind of having the support around, you know, mid ankle, mid side of my foot overall. So if somebody would make that shoe, I would, I would absolutely just sell it <laughs> forever, uh, just endlessly, endlessly stand it like I am the Reebok shoe. But unfortunately, I guess it can't be that. So um, I'm gonna continue to hunt. Um, at, the, at the end of the day, the, the final answer to the video is do not buy the Reebok or the Adidas Total Shoes. Don't buy any of these. Um, and also, I guess I'm wrong and the Sabos are the, the best available there is right now. So anyway, if you did like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.
Okay, I'm back with a final thought. I meant to say during the video that I am going to give away these notorious slippers. Um, I, I paid for them, but I, you know, I don't wanna send them back after this video, so I'm gonna give them away for free. So if you want these shoes, either this pair, this is the 45 of the 2.5s, the Sumo Soles, or I have the 44s that are all blue of the original soles, then for you to get these, I am going to give them to the first two people, I guess, um, limit one per customer, to share this video on Instagram, make sure it's a, a picture of the video, tag me and tell me which size shoe that you want. So those are the, that's the qualification. So I'm gonna be giving it to the, the first two people that do that, um, anybody else, I still appreciate the share. If you, if you share me and tag, I'll let you know whether you win or not. Uh, but obviously that could, that could happen pretty quick. Um, so anyway, yeah, thanks again for watching and I'm out.